Hello everyone. Uh, this week we're going to do the finish grind, at least part of it, on the big 45. Uh, but before we do that, I had to make a, a few modifications to some of the things. Uh, we're going to be using uh, these rail systems, uh, little blocks, and uh, that will I'll use them in order to uh, grind uh, the squareness on the 45, which you'll see coming up. Uh, I just had uh, to begin with on my first block that I did just a regular screw hole in there but uh, I have to make these so they're adjustable so I can use them over and over again. One of the problems I run into is uh, there's a half inch hole spacing on all that so if I put in a screw using a standard hardened flattened washer like this uh, it's a 5 8 diameter. If I put another one in there, there's an overlap, so I can't use the washers in it. So the solution is to take uh, a 1032 a washer. Uh, and let's see, here's the one for the quarter 20. That has a 5 8 diameter, and it's 120 thousandths thick. This has a half inch diameter, and it's 96 thousandths deep. But the problem is uh, the hole is made for 1032. You can't get the, the, a quarter inch bolt to go through there. So I made this little fixture over here. So you can see that I got the 1032 washers in here, the quarter inch screws. And uh, what I've done is I made a little fixture so I can pop these uh, 1032 screws or washers. I can pop them uh, in this fixture over here and uh, I, I have uh, with our jaws that we make and sell they got a uh, quarter 20 tap toes in a pattern over here so with this fixture I got it so that I can hold it uh, with the two quarter inch screws to the jaw back jaw so when I open up the movable jaw, I'm never going to lose my location. And what I have is I have a hole that fits just about perfect for this uh, uh, 1032 washer. Made this out of some scrap 4140 pre-hard that I have. Uh, I bored the whole necessary size hole for the washer in there. Saw cut all the way down to here, all the way across. And so what will happen is when I uh, tighten the jaw there's a 20,000 step at this area right here this area right here is 20 thousandths lower than right here so when I tighten the uh, vise it will squeeze this part right here and put pressure on that washer And so the next thing you need to do, these washers are hardened, uh, they're a case hardened washer and you can cut through them uh, using carbide but what you need to do is you need to uh, use a, a carbide end mill and use one that's uh, already kind of uh, shot, I wouldn't use a new one on it because you know that would tear them up. So, I always keep my old carbide and uh, uh, an end mill that I hardly ever would use on uh, steel here or used on hard parts. I just mark the case. Uh, I just uh, write hard on there knowing that I can use that for hard material. Well, I want to cut a little bit bigger than a uh, quarter inch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a piece of paper on uh, one side of this end mill over here. And this sometimes is kind of hard. I got the collet in here. I'll have to uh, see if I can keep my fingers out of the way when I'm doing this. Uh, maybe be easier to do it this way. And this will take a little bit of practice. Yeah, see so if we can do it this way. There we go. And so now we got the piece of paper and it's on one side of the collet. And what will happen is 
that will push off a few thousandths uh, and what it will do is cause that end mill to cut oversize. So the last time I was doing that, I was getting about three or four thousandths over a quarter inch. I'm going to have to raise my table up here. Get my zero, just snug my table down a little bit. You can see it works just perfect for uh, making a nice quarter inch hole a little bit bigger, about four thousandths big. And I like it that way because it doesn't wander very far from the screw. Uh, uh, so I don't like a lot of clearance on there. But anyhow, that's uh, a little fixture works real good if you got a lot of these to do. And I like to have uh, quite a few of these like this uh, because uh, the standard quarter washer a lot of times it, it's too big for stuff that I want to do and uh, so having some of these just laying around is fine uh, they're nice and handy and uh, I keep uh, I like to keep a half dozen dozen or so of those uh, around just so I can use them and uh, later on I'll take some and that half inch diameter is even bigger than what I want on some projects and so uh, I have another fixture that I'll be doing here uh, pretty soon where I'll uh, uh, be grinding the ODs concentric to that ID on there. So sometimes they're a little bit hard to get out, but most of the time they come out pretty good. But that's what you got now is a nice uh, smaller uh, outside diameter uh, that fits a quarter inch screw just about perfect. And uh, you get just a little burr on there, so you take a carbide chamfering tool and just put it in a hand drill, hold this in the pliers, and, and knock the burr off. So we're going to go. Uh, and get set up for grinding on the 45 and so we'll see you at the surface grinder in a few minutes okay I already ground the, the about a half inch surface is all I have on the bottom side there I already ground that to this surface and what I'm gonna do now is I got this block set up and I'm just gonna uh, I got to just lower it now Try to keep my hand all the way a little bit there, but <clears throat> okay, I got there and it feels real good. And what I'll do is I'll lock this uh, screw down, and I don't have to get it real tight. I just got to get it snug. All that's going to do is that as support when I come across here, <coughs> and. Uh, It'll keep this from dipping. And what I'm doing, I'm taking the widest surface right now. Uh, I want to clean that up. And if it's a few tenths out with everything, I'm not concerned. This will be my reference surface that everything else will get squared up to. So this is what uh, we'll do uh, right now. And uh, we'll get that where it's looking real good. And we'll just see... How close it is. Uh, I got my digital set zero from where I was at on the other side. So we'll just come across it dry with that marker on there and see if it's actually going to take anything off. That way I can tell if it's uh, not setting proper. Uh, I'll be able to tell. And it looks pretty good right there. If that was uh, uh, cocked one way or the other, uh, it would it would have ground on one or uh, either this edge or that edge. It would have sparked already. So uh, I can tell you right now that it's setting on there uh, very very good and true to that surface already. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get the coolant going. Uh, I like to get that going a little bit to begin with. Uh, and cool the part down, cool the magnet down, and uh, it was running in the background earlier there uh, just to keep everything nice and cool. When you're doing this precision grinding, 
uh, and you're shooting for extremely tight tolerance, you want to keep as much and many of the variables the same as you can, and the temperature will be one of them. And so that's where coolant comes in really good for projects like this. I'm just going to wind down about two tenths. See if we uh, touch. Yeah, and we're already touching. I actually uh, floated to three tenths now. Looks like it might be a little light on this side, but once I get this surface nice, I'll flip it over and redo the other surface I, again, taking a tenth or two off, and uh, then this wide surface and the surface that is on the magnet uh, ought to be uh, really good and flat to each other and uh, running parallel. And uh, that will be two sides that will be done. And like I say, everything else will be squared to that. So let's just take, uh, just try to take another tenth at a time here. Again, using that green silicon carbide, there's not much life I got between dresses, but it uh, cuts real nice and cool, leaves uh, just a tremendously a uh, nice finish on it. And it does cut that DC-53. Uh, it does cut it pretty nice. I know regular stone wheels has a hard time with it. The aluminum oxide type. Yeah, it looks like we're going to have to go probably a couple more tenths to get a complete uh, clean up. It, it looks like it just got a little bit right on the edge there yet. And that could be caused by the gravity that uh, all the weight hanging on this side. But again, everything will get trued up to this side. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to get this all cleaned off and then we'll see uh, at the granite. Okay, I haven't touched this side up again yet, but I just wanted to make sure this side was nice and flat. And as you can see, uh, it's, it's less than 50 millionths shown on there. And this is the side I want flat because that's the side that everything else is going to get referenced to. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take this clamp off. And then I'm going to uh, clean up this side right here. And then that means uh, the surface that's on the granite and this surface will be flat and parallel and true to each other. And I'll use this as the reference source for uh, uh, squaring up this side, these two sides, and the 45. Okay, we'll, we'll see you back at the granite in a little bit. I'm going to clean this side up. Just finished dusting this one off. This is a 50 millionths indicator. And as you can see, it, the needle's not even barely, barely moving. And uh, so it's, it's, I know, almost perfect flat right now. 
So we have this side and this side established. This is the reference side. This side is already flat and parallel with that side. And so what we'll do next is we'll set this up and we'll, uh, <clears throat> what I'll do is I'll position these rails. I'll get them in the proper position. Uh, like so and get them adjusted so that they're a few thousands higher than this surface right here and uh, uh, what we'll do then is uh, we'll go ahead and set on this surface uh, grind everything nice and flat flip it over 180 degrees and take a cut on this surface and then we're going to check and see how square it is from there, which it'll probably be a few tenths out. But that's when we're going to adjust things using uh, the shim, grinding a shim method, uh, either this side or the very end of this. And so that we can actually, uh, using that method, we can, we can adjust the squareness. And uh, we'll, we'll get set up and we'll do that and we'll see you back here shortly. Okay, what we got now... I already got this one set, but uh, if I set this down like so, and I zero out here, and then I come and zero on that, uh, it's 50 thousandths different. So I got uh, some shim stock set up here, and it's 50 uh, thousand stack, but there's, uh, you know, it varies a little bit. So anyhow, I'm reading zero there. Oops, just bumped it. reading zero there and it comes out about a thou high here it's about two thou high on the other side and uh, so what I do at this point then is uh, I can put the screws in we're not going to reef real hard on them because we don't want to distort the other side but we want them tight enough that they won't move and uh, so I'm setting at zero here and I'm one thou high right over here so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna clean up these two surfaces so that uh, and this surface so that they're all the same and what that does it lets me grind as if this was a square part and by doing that uh, it makes it easier to square the parts up so we'll uh, cut out uh, get set up on the grinder and see you there okay what we're setting right now I have it set on the surface grinder I did touch off on this side I backed it up a thou uh, I believe this side was two thou high this was a thou high and uh, so we're gonna come down and uh, Try to make these match. And we'll just take our time coming back, let the coolant uh, stabilize uh, uh, both of these, well, all the whole unit here uh, to a proper temperature. And we're at zero now. Taking a couple tenths off the back right now.
Okay, now these sides should be established really good. Uh, they should be less than uh, a tenth on three of these surfaces. Uh, what I'm going to do is we're going to cut out for a little bit because it takes a while to clean out these uh, holes here and it'd be boring to watch. I'm going to get that nice and clean. I'm going to redress my wheel. I'm going to flip the part over and then the part that's on the magnet we're going to just take a clean up cut on that and then we'll go over to the granite table and check and see uh, a couple things how flat and parallel both sides are and then what we'll do is we'll actually check the squareness okay we got her cleaned up flipped over getting her temp the temperature stabilized with coolant again I touched off on the back side have it inked up so we can see the grind and you can see how uh, these two legs right here are acting to stabilize that and so in a sense if I get this ground flat this side's flat uh, that will actually act like a square and uh, when we finish grinding this we'll go to the granite table and then we'll show you how easy it is to square things in at this point Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to take this uh, over to the granite and uh, we're going to check how flat it is. But one of the things I did, I swapped the tip out to this needle valve so I can stick this all the way in the hole and blow it out and it makes cleaning these uh, holes out a lot faster. So it still takes a while. So we're going to cut off. I'm going to clean the block up, get it nice and clean, and we'll meet you back at the granite table. Okay, we got this set up now. So we can check the squareness off camera. I already checked the flatness and it was less than 50 millionths from both sides. And uh, now I'm going to use a squareness comparator. And uh, it's got a pivoting point right here. I got the indicator lined up as close as I can on center. A lot of times what I'll do to get that lined up is I'll, I'll, I'll just... Uh, grab a sharp edge like that and uh, I'll, I'll, get, I'll move the indicator tip uh, close to the pivot point and the reason I do that is I want the high point to pivot uh, where that's lined up uh, about 90 degrees as much as possible so anyhow as you sweep the indicator back and forth you can get the it goes to the high point back down to the high point back down and we're just a little over zero. Let me get that set. Now we're right at zero. And so what we do at this point, we flip the block over, make sure the table's wiped down so there's no grid underneath there or particles. Now that will mess up your reading. And then we'll come over here and we'll check this side by doing the same thing. And you can see we're thou high. So <clears throat> that means the total indicator reading on the squareness of this right now is, is 1,000 out, but the actual squareness is half of that reading. So we're actually 5 ten thousandths of an inch out in this distance, which is about uh, a little over three and a half inches. So, so if we come across over here, we can see that this side is high. this side is low so this block needs to kick back that way uh, in order to get it to uh, move we got a total indicator of one thousandths we need it only to move back five ten thousandths and then it will be perfect square in order to do that we'll do the shim method if I take stock off 
of this side right here and drop that by a few tenths uh, and grind a shim in here I can kick that back until it's square and so we're gonna go over to the surface grinder now and uh, we're, we're gonna we're gonna take a little bit off that side barely touch off that side and because right now I'm just working on the squareness I'm going to uh, I'm gonna just dry cut this and uh, once I get it square I'll turn the coolant back on and then we'll do the finish cleanup cut on that and the thing of it is I do not need a master with a situation like this for squareness because I'm actually measuring the differences and once I get it so that I read zero flip it over read it zero it's going to be super square and if I square it to a master and the master's out just a little bit well I'm only going to get this as good as the master by doing this way I can get it as good as the whatever the reading I can get on my indicator so there's different ways that you can use this so we'll see you back by the surface grinder okay I just marked this thing up and I'm gonna just come across here just to establish uh, my flatness just taking a tenth off and it looks like it didn't touch there still not touching Looks like it's just barely touching right now. And you can see it just barely touching, just barely taking the ink off. So I'm going to come all the way across. So because the distance between this edge and where I come up here is going to be real close to the same distance as what I was checking the squareness in, I should be able to go just about a, uh, five tenths. I'm just going to go a couple tenths at a time. And what I'll do is uh, I'm only going to go four tenths and then I'll check the squareness. And so I'm not going to come all the way across over here. Uh, you can see a little line I got. I'm going to just come up close to the edge. So what that will do is that establish that this part right here is going to be about four or five tenths higher than the back corner. And that should bring uh, our squareness into play. So you can see I'm not coming all the way off the part. I'm leaving a little step in there. And we'll be back to the granite table to check and see where the squareness is at now. Okay, what we did is we, we ground so that there's a little step in this side. And we ground this edge off so that it should kick that back. And what I was shooting for was trying to get a 5 tenths indicator reading on here. And we were set at zero on the low side, uh, one thousandths on the high. So if it's square, it should be about 5 tenths, and you can see we got just about an exact 5 tenths. So now I'll take it back to the grinder. I'll set this down on the magnet. I'll grind this side, flip it back over, dust this side, and then uh, we'll check how square. And at this point, I'll be using coolant. Okay, this should be the high side right now. I just touched off on the back side, backed off 2 and a half tenths, and... Uh, so just about the midpoint, maybe a little bit beyond, 
Yeah, I can hear it touching right now. And it should cut heavier as I get closer to this side. Okay, what we're going to do, I'm going to clean the block up off camera. I'm going to flip it upside down uh, where this is on the magnet side. And I'm going to grind that step out so that this side and that side will be flat and parallel. And then we're going to bring it back and we're going to check it on the granite. And it should be much closer to being square at this point. Okay, so off camera what I did is I just did a light cleanup on this surface and on the very tip of of uh, that step right there so that it's it's flat on the three points and uh, uh, <coughs> we on camera you saw grinding that side and so before we were a total indicator reading of 1000 out and so now we'll check the squareness and you can see right here I'm sitting right on zero And right here, I'm at just about three tenths low. So we got it, uh, we got it uh, squared up quite a bit there. So that being low, that means I need to kick it back here. That means I need to grind a step in here, uh, maybe a couple tenths, and redo this. And so I'm going to do this off camera because it takes a while. You already seen the process, and then we'll just repeat the process. When it comes to squaring up these sides with this, uh, and uh, we'll use the same step method. And what we'll do is we'll grind. Uh, uh, let me turn this up. What we'll do is we can grind the step from here uh, to here and just leave it a little high over here. And then that way we can establish the squareness in this direction. And once it's square that way, we can do the same thing by grinding a step in that way and leaving a little high that way and we can establish the squareness that way. And so what I'm going to do is you already seen the process that I'm using. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do this all off camera. And what we will have is one more video and that's where we're going to be grinding that 45 so that it's flat parallel and square with all these sides. And uh, so uh, when we start that video, what we'll do is we'll show how square that it actually comes out. As you can see, there's a lot of work uh, in grinding a block like this. And especially with the coolant hose, blowing them out, it does take time. So it's something that's going to take a lot of patience. You're just not going to whip through it uh, and get it real accurate. So anyways, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.